Hello, today we heard on the radio Decrops and Caliban with Alive in a Glass Cage. Interesting thing, because it's, it's a single release in the current world. I mean, who even does that these days? Unless you're like Japanese or something. Mm. No one else even has singles, they don't seem to exist. Yeah, and what's more, in, even more interesting about this particular single is that it's. I suppose you could call it a remix, but not really. It's a collaborative rearrangement, I guess is probably the best way of saying it. I think that sounds kind of ham fisted, but. Yeah, that's that's a better way of describing it. It's a collaborative rearrangement because um, they did originally release this song on Decrups Five Machineries of Joy. Um, at least I think it was that album. Uh, let me just check. No, oh, Five is Metal Machine Music. Machinists of Joy was the previous album. But it is, I'm not fully familiar with the crops like you are, so... Yeah, I've been listening to them since I was, like, 12, so... It's a dawn of time. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is an interesting one, because you don't often hear a collaboration between industrial metal and metalcore. It is an interesting combination. I, I suppose the nearest thing kind of me to think of, actually, is the kind of combination between Pendulum and In Flames for Self as Self. Yeah? Because that sounds pretty damn good. Mm. And you know, not what you expect, in fact, that it's, you know, a combination of melodic death metal and drum and bass. Mm-hmm. And it actually works really well. So it's sort of interesting to see collaborations between two completely different genres and have them kind of match together as well as they do. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting about this rearrangement is, you know, typically... Actually, that's a good comparison. It's kind of like when Run DMC and Aerosmith did Walk This Way together, only instead of it being vocal replacement, it's instrumental replacement, because the original is very much an industrial song, whereas in this case you have some of the synths and whatnot replaced with heavy guitar work, that sort of thing. Also, when I first listened to it, I just obviously listened to the original song first. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, I know what the original song is. And I heard the, re- the uh, rearrangement, and it's like, this sounds exactly the same. And it just changed. <laughs> initially, the first like opening part sounds almost identical. Yeah. And then once the guitar hits, it's sort of like, wait, what? Ah, uh, it's got a bit more beast kind of. Mm. Um, now, I've never been too much of a fan of metalcore. <laughs> It's always felt like the natural progression for a lot of new metal in how whiny it sounds. <laughs> I mean, I have heard some Caliban before, but it was quite a while ago. But I remember thinking, yeah, they were alright. Nothing particularly special. Mm. But I haven't really gone back, because obviously they weren't that important. <laughs> <laughs> to me. Yeah, I looked up a, f- a few Caliban songs, and yeah, same. I thought, yeah, this is alright. It's not particularly objectionable. Um, I feel they do work quite well with this song. It's It was definitely a good idea of the two bands to collaborate. Um, I wouldn't, I'd definitely not say it's necessarily their best collaboration. Um, if you want that sort of thing, go for Decrups' collaborative work with Nitzer Ebb, which is amazing. It is. I mean, the thing is, it feels as if it doesn't. I mean, personally, for me, I think it doesn't quite stray far enough from the original to actually work that well. Because mm-hmm. it does. What obviously it does have the extra kind of edginess to it mm-hmm. because of the Caliban influence. It just seems like it sounds a bit too close to the original Decrypt song. I can see where you're coming from. I I personally think that's probably why I don't have a problem with it. Mm, I mean, that's a, it does have its benefits as well. In fact, if it sounded too different, and him, of course, is just, you know, your average metalcore song that happened to have, you know, a little bit of decops elements, it wouldn't necessarily sound as good. Well, like we arranged where, you know, they actually take the original song and change things completely, but still have the sound of the same kind of feel. I mean, I think the best way to think of that is probably Rosetta doing a cover of Homesick by The Cure. Mm-hmm. Or possibly Morning Beloved doing a cover of Weeping Song by Nick Cave. Yeah. In both cases, you know, it's a pretty damn heavy metal band covering a song that is totally not metal. Yeah. And both of them, they have their own swing on it. I mean, in both cases, I mean, at least for Rosetta, I mean, okay, so where Homesick is quite long in the first place, but it kind of feels a lot more ambient than I've been expecting kind of post-metal band, with the kind of vocals being a lot further in back and kind of behind the music. Yeah. It's kind of quite a haunting feeling too, it actually works really well with the, the uh, theme of the song. That's the Morning Beloved, the case of the original Weeping song is only about four and a half minutes long, but their version's, I think it's about nine or something like that. 
On the other hand, no, what do you really expect from a um, doom metal band covering a Nick Cave song? Yeah. It just kind of takes a, a song that's not exactly happy in the first place, and then just makes it even more dreary and, well, doomy, I guess. Yeah. To be fair with Nick Cave, the progression to doom metal is not that surprising a shift. Yeah, Nick Cave kind of, the, the, I mean, the music isn't anywhere near similar, but the kind of themes is, is very much on point. <laughs> the themes, the rhythm... Generally, Nick Cave's sound in general feels very appropriate for doom metal, goth, all that sort of thing. I mean, if you, when you really think about it, the intersections between Nick Cave and goth music are widely overlapping. Yeah, I would say that Nick Cave is very much the similar kind of. I don't know whether you use the word aesthetic these days because you know, it's associations with things I'm paper with, but I guess that is probably the right word for it. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, back on topic. Um. It's very interesting to consider what Decrups typically sound like. Um, overall, I do like this song. I would say I have some issues with the lead singer of Caliban. It's kind of the issue that I have with a lot of metalcore bands that does ultimately have me wanting to punch a clown in the face with a grenade. <laughs> I mean, I think... I mean, it's kind of a kind of stereotypical metalcore vocalist sound. A lot of bands do have. Yeah. It's not necessarily the case of the problem with the vocals as such. It's more the case of whether those particular vocals work with the music in the background. Yeah. A lot of metalcore songs, I think, a lot of bands, they have the same you know, generic metalcore vocals, if you want to call it that. Hmm. But the actual music itself is just not the right kind of style, or it's not interesting enough to kind of match up to that. Yeah. Um... Jürgen is on point, as always, but that's not surprising. I mean, he's been in the business for, like, almost 30 years. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, he mm, In fact... Now, he, correction, almost 40 years. So to say he's been around quite a while. To be Caliban are quite old as well, I remember listening to them a long time ago. Um, or at least a decade. Let's have a look. 1997, so nearly two decades. Yeah. So they both know what they're doing. I'd say overall it's a good song. Um, personal rating of it is... Three and a half Shakespearean Industries out of five. Where's Shakespearean Industries? Caliban. It's just the way you phrased it more than anything else. Well, industrial metal, a band called Caliban... Yeah, I suppose. Shakespearean it's industry. A, just a very kind of stretched pun. Wasn't a very obvious one, I'm not quite sure which. This is not even mutually compatible, but... Anyway, definitely a song to check out. It's just... I'd say check out the original first, because I personally prefer the original. I probably agree, yeah. I mean, you know I mentioned earlier on about you know, the fact it doesn't actually sound you know, that much different compared to the original. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that the Caliban influence really adds that much to it. Mm. But overall, I'd say it, it's a worthwhile collaboration. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they've collaborated on more songs. I only know of Alive in a Glass Cage as the collaboration they've done so far, so it'll be interesting to see what else they're doing. Mm. Yeah, the song, it's quite interesting to listen through. Uh, You've got the typical heavy guitars of metalcore and typical industrial stuff. So that's worthwhile checking the song out alone. But as I say, go for the original first, which is on um, Metal Machine Music. Um, you'll know it by the fact that it's got a big V on the front and there's all sorts of foundry stuff going on in the background. So you'll know it's the right one. Anyway, so that's the very first single review and probably be the only one for a while because, as we said, singles don't get released that often. Singles are very, very uncommon. Mm. At least outside of certain countries. And since we live in the UK, there's pretty much nothing here. Yeah. But I don't even, even realise you can buy any singles in this country anymore. I wouldn't even know where to go. Oh, like second-hand shops that are selling singles that were released like a decade ago, so... Yeah. I, I would have no idea. I just... I only found out about this single being released because of it coming up in my Facebook feed. Because I'm friends with Jürgen. Yeah, if I, uh, I suppose I probably do still release singles on iTunes, but um, other companies, like, other companies and um, services like that. But, eh, what should I care? Mm. Um, but anyway, that's it for this 
mini sewed. That's uh, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me.